Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today I'm excited to launch the new series called A-Level Physics. And today in this video, we're gonna look into the first chapter, Kinematics and Describing Motion with Usain Bolt. Just wanna remind you that if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do subscribe because we are currently only sitting at 27.6% and this will be the only favor I ask from you. Thank you. And to look at this chapter, this is a word cloud. Basically, these are the terms that you will be learning over and over again in this video. And the chapter outlined is also here. And the first sub -tra chapter we're going to look into is speed of motion. We're going to look into what's the difference between average speed and instantaneous speed. So average speed is the total distance travel divided by the total time taken. So for example, if you are traveling from one spot to another, your speed may be different throughout the journey. And average speed gives you what's your average speed for that entire journey. Whereas instantaneous speed is more on describing the speed in that instant. For example, in that second, your speed is 89 km per hour. And here's the formula to calculate speed. We have learned that in IGCSE already. This is just a recap. The formula is distance over time and the unit is meter per second, you can also use alternative unit. And next, we're gonna learn something new that is not in IGCSE, which is the concept of displacement. So distance is the total length of the path traveled by an object. For example, from point A to point B, this will be the distance. And displacement is slightly different because it involves direction. For example, A to B, displacement is the straight line distance in a specific direction. So you can see that in this case, the direction is around 150 degree, and that's what you have to state when you are describing a displacement. So this is also what Waze or Google Map tries to show you every time. So sometime when, when I was using the app, I realized that the distance stated is actually way less than the actual distance like that. But later I realized that it's just a displacement calculation and not a distance. So that's a difference that you need to know. This leads us to velocity. So velocity is the rate of change of displacement. And an example would be the helicopter flies at a velocity of 20, 200 meter per second due east. So this direction part is what you need to emphasize. And here we have the symbol for everything. Again, we have learned most of them in IGCSE. The new one would be displacement. So this is something you need to memorize. Let's solve some questions. If a cyclist is riding at 10 meters per second, how far would they travel in 30 minutes? Convert time into second, and just use the formula that we are very familiar with, distance equal to speed times time, and multiply it and you shall get the distance traveled by this cyclist. And the second question, if a car is racing at this speed, how long will it take to cover 150 kilometers? We can use the formula, and it will give us the time that it needs to take, which is always been hour because hour is the SI unit and because the question is asking for minutes you just have to convert that into minutes by the way I'm spitting it through the working steps because I figured that this might save us some time so if you prefer me to write down the step step by step using an iPad please let me know in the comment section and I will do modification now without further ado let's also look into the next graph called the displacement time graph what it shows is that it shows an object displacement changes over time. In this graph here, gradient represents the velocity. And because of that, the part that of the graph that has a higher gradient, it means that the object is traveling at a higher velocity. And it makes sense. If you look at the graph here, from one second to two seconds, the displacement changes a lot. And what that says is that the object is traveling at a much faster velocity. And if the gradient is zero, you can see that the displacement doesn't change. When this is the case, it means that it's not moving, it is stationary. Lastly, if the gradient is negative, it's going back to its original position, and that states that the object is moving backwards. So to summarize, the steeper the slope, the greater the velocity, and when the slope becomes negative, it means that the object is returning to the original. And this changing slope here, as compared to a slope is constant, it means that the object is changing speed throughout the journey. That's why the gradient across the graph here is different. Now let's solve some question. Calculate the velocity of the object from t equal to one to t equal to two. To do that, we can just calculate the gradient of that part of the graph. So this is what I will do, 20 minus five, two minus one, which will give me the velocity of the object from that time. Great, now it's time to introduce some geometry and trigonometry. 
that's something that is not very frequently mentioned in IGCSE. So for example, you want to travel from point red to point blue here. How do you calculate the displacement? Like from here to here, the shortest distance. This is why we can use trigonometry. So what we can do, this is the hypotenuse. We can use the formula of Pythagoras to find us what's the displacement of that section. If this is the graph instead, it's slightly more complicated. Then this is when we can use a scale diagram rather than Pythagoras theorem. If you look at this graph here, so this is my dis distance, which is 14 kilometer. So by drawing a scale diagram, I can figure out what's the displacement. Assuming that I'm using 1 cm equal to 2 kilometer, and I will draw a line connecting it, calculate what's the length of the resultant line, and then convert it back into displacement, which is the quantity here. Do note that in this case, because we are calculating the displacement, you do need to provide a direction. So you can see that the pink color line here, we say that its direction is south 8 west. What it means is, we'll move 8 degrees from south towards the west. This is what the direction symbol means here, right? So that's how we use geometry and scale diagram to deduce this display. We can do the same thing for velocity. So in this case here, I have a boat traveling vertically and the water is flowing at the same direction as the boat. So the resultant velocity, we can just sum them up, which is 40. But if the water is flowing in another direction, that's when we need to minus them to find out the resultant velocity. And that's still considered pretty easy. What's complicated is what if the river is flowing horizontally? So what I would do is that I would draw a sketch, meter per second, meter per second, and then I'll complete triangle and I you have a delta symbol here, we'll calculate that later. And by using Pythagoras theorem, we know how fast the object is traveling because we are calculating the hypotenuse. You are traveling at this speed, but the water is also sort of adding some speeds to your, sp to your boat, right? So that's how we calculate the resultant velocity. In which direction will the boat be traveling? And that's when you can use trigonometry to find out the angle and you will be able to figure out that the boat is moving 18.43 degree from north to the west and you, that's why you can see the boat has changed direction from this because of the flow of the river then it will move here so that's how we can use geometry and scale diagram to deduce velocities assuming that two person are running you want to find out how much faster person A is moving away from person B you can do so by using subtracting factors look this person is moving at 4 meter per second it, but it doesn't mean that they're moving 4 meter away from us per second because we are also moving assuming that we are the person B so that's when I can use factor A minus B so I will put the speed into the equation and I can find out that this person is moving 2 meters per second away from us. So that's one use cases of subtracting vectors. So that's when things come in handy. So when we're minusing the velocity, what we are doing is we are adding the same velocity but in a different direction. So that's how fast women A is moving away from women B. This is another example where subtracting vectors can be handy. So let's say A and B are moving away from each other this time. So the question is how much faster person A is moving away from person B. So that's a little bit of relative motion. We can again solve this by subtracting vectors. So A, because they are moving in different direction here. So which means that the velocity will be negative. So here should be negative. Let me show you by example. 4 minus 2, but this 2 is the, the opposite direction. So when we're adding it up, we reverse the direction. So this gives us the answer, which means that these two person, they are moving away from each other at 6 meter per second. Right, that's how subtracting vectors, just a little bit of context to help you understand. Okay, the last subchapter of the day is scalar and vector quantities. So scalar quantity is a physical quantity that has only magnitude. So these are all the quantities that you don't have to specify direction when you calculate them. Whereas vector quantity is quantity that has a direction which is something that we have been learning today, displacement, velocity. These are quantities that we need to state direction for. And that's the end of the first video. I'm glad that you watched into this part. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.